39 minutes after that 7 o'clock hour, you're in tune to Despierta Belice, La Cultura Norteña. If you're just joining us on this beautiful Wednesday morning, today is the 29th of August. We thank you so much for being in tune. And joining us on set this morning for this segment, we have with us Mr. Richard Harrison. And we welcome him to Despierta Belice this morning. I think it's the first time you're visiting us, right? <laughs> yes, thank you very much and good morning to all the listeners of uh, Despierta Belize. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, it's a beautiful yes. studio here with all thank of these you. beautiful hardwoods. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very so nice. much. Uh -huh. um, let's start off by talking a bit about who Richard Harrison is, just mm -hmm. for Orange Joaquinos and Corosarenos mm -hmm. to get to know uh, who you are. Probably some of them have uh, been following you on your Facebook page, on your posts, mm -hmm. and what you have been writing on. Uh, but let's get to know a bit more about who Richard Harrison is. Okay. Well, I'm just a Belizean business person. Um, I just involve myself in private life mostly. Um, I have a master's degree in business administration from the Lancaster University in England. And um, my involvement in business has been to the extent of uh, working with distribution. I used to work for Brodies for about five years in the beginning. And then I worked with my family business, which was the Big H, for about three years. And then I started my own business, which was Verena's, Verena Foods. Uh, and so I was all over the country selling my products. A lot of people know me. Uh, we used to sell a lot of our products here in, our, in, in Orange Walk, right? right? And um, since then, I've been involved in other businesses. I have a little hotel, Belize Tucan Nest in uh, San Ignacio and um, basically uh, I also used to work for the government of Belize for about five years. I worked in the veterinary laboratory in Belize City when I was much younger um, and I worked in the Ministry of Agriculture uh, for a year and a half, uh, mostly uh, through what is called the RUTA, the Regional Unit for Technical Assistance, which uh, is funded by a group of uh, international like the UNDP, the FAO, um, different organizations that fund that project to help the Ministry of Agriculture to develop uh, what they call fundable projects, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then I worked a, a stint in Mexico City um, as a Secretary for Trade and Investment and Tourism. Uh, so I opened that desk in, in Mexico City, the, in the Belize Embassy there. So. Basically, that's my my vast experience. <laughs> that's my professional background. Vast experience, yeah. uh -huh. and 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 for those who, as I mentioned, have been following your posts over mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. we would call you an advocate of a no to the ICJ, mm -hmm. no to going to the International Court of Justice mm -hmm. to take the Guatemala claim over Belize for mm -hmm. final resolution mm -hmm. to the Hague. Um, Let's, let's start off with that because apart from that, we mm -hmm. know that you are making your wrongs across the country to various media houses, mm -hmm. TV and radio, and uh, you are promoting a cause that you are going to be having on the, the 21st of September, mm -hmm. which is the aim is to take 15,000 Belizeans to Belmopan on, okay. that, on that date. Okay. But let's start off with that stance that you have of no to the ICJ of taking this long uh, dispute mm -hmm. to the ICJ for final resolution. Mm -hmm. Why take that stance? Let me first say uh, how I came to the, to the realization, to the conclusion that I need to do this work mm -hmm. for my country, right? Um, about two months ago, right? Um, this thing really got heated up, this mm -hmm. thing about ICJ. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I'm probably one of the more informed people in Belize. You know, I'm not an ignorant person, right? Um, but really and truly, I used to listen to these little news about a special agreement, about something in Placencia, you know, like, but you never did pay too much attention to it. This thing is 150 odd years old, you know, Sammy? And it has, sometimes it flares up, sometimes it goes quiet, and sometimes it flares up again, and so like that, right? So I, I didn't really pay keen attention until about two months ago, really, right? And um, 
I started reading up on this thing because I saw this thing coming to a head. I saw Guatemala had their referendum right. in April, you know, and um, and then they announced that Belize was going to have theirs uh, next year, you know, and I said, wow, uh, this thing is, is heating up again, mm -hmm. right? And then when I looked at our political scenario, I saw that how our prime minister came out and uh, with his head down like this, he was saying that how he believes we should go to the ICJ. If you look at the video of, of his declaration, you see that he was mostly hanging his head down. And, and I, I read those signs, you know what I mean? And then if the foreign minister came out and he as well, you know, uh, he is yes to the ICJ and, and, and who, who is saying no to the ICJ have to be crazy, right? Um, and then the leader of the opposition was also saying yes to the ICJ at the time. So I said, wow, you know, like, and I come from a school where we used to have uh, students companion, you know, we, that's, that's how I went to primary school and that's when I learned to read and how to comprehend what I read, you know. And one of the basic things uh, that the student companions teach you is that how there are pros and cons to every argument, pros and cons, right? So I, I'm, I'm trained in that, you know, to always look at the positive side and the, and the negative side of something, right? And then you debate it and then you, you, you pick the one that is, that is best for you at the time, right? So when I saw these two, the, the two leaders of the country saying yes, and, and, and I, I'm not from that school, you know, so, and then I never heard anybody else saying anything, you know, um, nobody is trying to organize the people or to try to tell them a different side of a story. And then uh, I said to myself, I think this is something that I need to, to say because when I looked at all of the story around this ICJ, mm -hmm. I came up with the conclusion that how we shouldn't go at this time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I said, uh, I have to use the skills that I have. You know, I, I had the, the fortune of putting together the Ruta Maya in 1998. You know, uh, I, I went across the country the same way what I'm doing with this thing. And I convinced people that the Ruta Maya was something good for Belize. And uh, many people helped me. You know, many, many people with lots of small contributions. And, and this is exactly, I said, I have to use that same skill because you know, it's something that I already proved to myself that I can do, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it was maybe, a, maybe around the same two months time, that volcano thing happened in Guatemala, you know, and I said, wow, I said, and I, uh, what is Belize doing to help them, you know? And I never heard anything, no official announcements, no Nemo is helping, no Red Cross is helping, no nothing, you know what I mean? And I said, wow, I said, let me try to do something. And we got together with a group of people, just private citizens. And in one week, in eight days, we were sending uh, three big truckloads of, right. of, of things. And, and uh, we were helped by all the radio stations, you know, Reef TV in San Pedro, you know, this, um, uh, this one in uh, Radio Bahia in, in, Coro in Corozal, you know. Um, all the, the people in the media were helping us and, and private citizens came together. And we did it very quickly. So I became uh, uh, convinced that how I, I still have the capabilities, I still have the energies, and I still and people still respond to me and trust me, in a way where I think that how I can do this again. Right. So that's how I came to the realization that how I must do this mm -hmm. for the country. So we came together with a group of people. It's not only me alone. There's a lot of people in the whole country who are helping, mm -hmm. and we call ourselves the Citizens Committee. That's how we call ourselves, because we are non-political, we are not aligned with any party, uh, and uh, we are doing something for Belize, which is above any political party, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so we have uh, called the project, it's called Belize Independent Sovereign. That's how the project is called, mm -hmm. because we are promoting and we are reinforcing the fact that Belize is independent and sovereign, and we're sticking to that story, mm -hmm. and we want 8,867 square mile of it to remain independent and sovereign, right? So uh, this is basically uh, how we came to the story of, of how I became uh, right. activated, right. you know, uh, called into action for the country, right? So uh, in terms of now, why do I think that we should say no, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and there is a whole host of reasons that I believe we should say no. The first and foremost of which I believe is uh, that if you agree to go to a court 
Okay, a court is a place of law. Right? A court is, is, is a place where law is spoken there. Right? And that means that how you are giving legitimacy. Legitimacy means to make into law. Right? So, from the mere fact you agree to go to a court, you are, in that sense, legitimizing something. And this claim has always been unfounded. This claim is false. This claim is crazy, like the foreign minister. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, uh, we don't need to legitimize something, especially since that how we know how we got independence. George Price is the father of this nation, and uh, he and a whole host of people. There's a lot of people who work very hard for Belize to be where it is, right? And uh, I was fortunate at the age of 13 years, I was following George Price and all those people, you know, and uh, they used to come to Cayo a lot and I used to go to all the meetings. I used to listen to all their arguments. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that stood out with George Price is that how he argued the independence of Belize not based on law. He argued the, the, the independence of Belize based on self-determination. That is the UN charter of this, after the Second World War you know, uh, the decolonization of states, right? And so George Price never spoke to us. Well, we heard about, uh, you know, 1859 treaty. We heard about Clayton Bulwer. We heard about, you know, uh, th these different uh, treaties that, that, that were signed between, uh, in, in those days, it was between uh, Britain and Spain, right. right? And then one spell, it was between uh, Mexico, right? And, 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 and England and, and Spain. And then afterwards, it became Guatemala and England. Anglo-Guatemalan dispute it was called at that time, right? And then after we became independent, it became uh, Belize, Guatemala. So, it, it, you know, this is a whole long history of, right. of transformation. But I listened to George Perez Kinney, and he stuck to the self-determination story. All right? And that is where I think Belize should stick. We, we should not get into, see, like this, this legal thing, uh, people are not lawyers. And you can't expect all the people of Belize to become lawyers and to go into every treaty and to know every clause and everything that is in there. And I think George Price was very practical in that sense because he did not engage the people and try to make them lawyers. He used a more simple, easy to understand concept of self-determination. Easy to understand when somebody wants to self-actualize, right? To, to, to be an expression of self. And this is really the challenge that, that is facing Belize right now, is Belize has to define itself. Mm -hmm. We have to be sure about who we are, what we are, what do we stand for. And so I would stick to that story. That's the first. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. because, because whenever mm -hmm. we hear uh, people speak about not going to the ICG and the stance mm -hmm. that they have, mm -hmm. have taken, they can give you a number of, of reasons mm -hmm. why it is mm -hmm. that we should not be heading to that, to that direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have even heard some claims of uh, why not go to the ICJ? We mm -hmm. are independent, sovereign mm -hmm. country. We have the backing of the United Nations, of the UN. Mm -hmm. So at the mm -hmm. end, we have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. it's, they have even used the example of land and your title. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all documents in place. This is our land. Here is the title. So we go to the ICJ and at the end just to seek a final resolution for Guatemala to say, okay, the ICJ has decided that we have no claim over Belize. Mm -hmm. So we need to just uh, sit back and leave that, leave that alone. Based on these explanations of, of other individuals who are for the ICJ, mm -hmm. um, what, what would you think about, about them? Well, I, uh, first of all, I've been to the court. You know, against a very big opponent, a very strong and powerful, very rich corporation took me to court. And uh, I think I know a little bit about that. You know, uh, one of the things that my lawyer explained to me at that time, one of the best lawyers in Belize, uh, explained to me a thing that is called litigation risk. Okay? Whenever you go to a court, there are all kinds of risks involved some small technicality of the law can be used. And Belize is so 
riddled with experiences of small technicalities that get off all kinds of criminals. They walk right out of the court. You know what I mean? Right. On, on these little technicalities, right? And so uh, we also have experience on these watertight and ironclad, they call them, right? Oh, we got this thing locked down. You know what I mean? We're going to win hands down and that's it. We've been to court so many times in the CCJ. We've been to the uh, London Court of Arbitration. We've been to certain uh, courts in the United States, and we have lost everything. Many millions of dollars. This country is on the brink of economic collapse. We, our, our finances are not in good shape right now. Let's face it, right? And uh, uh, one of the big contributors to this reality is that we have lost so many millions of dollars in these court cases in, in the international courts, right? So Belizeans are a little bit wary, not a little bit, a lot wary. Mm -hmm. Right? A lot wary about this ironclad, watertight crap. I don't believe it. Yes, I mean, I, I, I don't buy that kind of story. Whenever you go to a court, there is litigation risk, and if you lose something, you lose it, no matter how small. Right? And one of my arguments is that how uh, Belize it, it has to be an integral state. Belize is so small, and our population is so small. Right? I argue that how. Uh, if you know the psychology behind uh, rape, if you know what, what is the psychology behind somebody being raped, and, uh, and what happens to that person after they, they, they become abused, right? The psychology, and, and there's a lot of docu documentation on it, right? Is that how that person suffers deeply. That person suffers destruction of self-esteem to a large extent, right? And I liken the loss of any part of Belize, no matter how small. Don't tell me let's lose the Sarastun Island. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me let's lose the Sarastun River. Don't tell me let's lose a piece of sea. Don't tell me let's lose the adjacency zone. Don't tell me any of those things, because the loss of any of those things will make me as a Belizean feel like a rape victim. Mm -hmm. And that will hurt our country, that will destroy our people's self-esteem. We need to remain a sovereign and independent state. But at, at, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, no matter the excuses that we bring along, the mm -hmm. reality is that there is an agreement. Mm -hmm. There is an agreement that uh, as uh, a country we have signed on to, and uh, basically if we read that agreement, it's telling us that we have no other alternative than going to the ICJ if we want to finally resolve this issue and just make it go away uh, mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. do, do you agree with that? Or based on your, your reading of the history and on, on mm -hmm. the agreement, do you believe that we do have other alternatives in order to solve this, this, this problem? Where does this problem originate from? What is the root cause of this pressure on Belize. I'll give you my opinion, mm -hmm. right? I think that Guatemala alone could never raise this ICJ issue. Guatemala is a country that has many, many problems. Their government is on the brink of, <laughs> of, <laughs> of being uh, taken down. Yes, I mean, uh, their, their people are, are very hostile towards their, their own government, right? For a lot of things, especially corruption. There's a lot of corruption over there. They have a UN organization which we need to have in Belize, the, the CICIG, right? Mm -hmm. The Convention uh, Against Corruption, right? And um, so Guatemala alone cannot do this. The, Guatemala is, 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 behind, is the front man for the people who are behind. I think that how we have some principal allies who are giving us a wake-up call. That's my honest opinion. The United States has been a long-time friend of Belize. Well, the United Kingdom is our mother, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We have Mexico right here next to us, who is of great concern because they are our neighbor, and we have been good friends with them. We also have the issue of Israel, right? And Israel is a good friend of Guatemala. And uh, recently, uh, 
there was a call by the U.S. president to move embassies from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, right. and uh, Belize uh, abstained, I, I believe. Yeah, Belize abstained. Belize abstained. And Guatemala, and Guatemala, was, Guatemala in favor. was in favor. And shortly after that announcement of Guatemala announcing the move of their embassy, Israel announced a two billion U.S. dollars worth of investments in Guatemala coming up, and uh, uh, and the, even the Prime Minister. Netanyahu of, of Israel announced that how he would visit Guatemala personally, you know, which is a big thing, right? So we have these allies uh, involved behind the scenes. What's happening with the U.S.? The U.S. has been asking Belize to do a lot of things. And instead of Belize complying with those things, Belize has been like a little stubborn person. They asked Belize, let's slow down with this money laundering. Mm -hmm. More of it happens. See, look how I understand that Scotiabank, I'm not sure if it's true, but I heard somebody told me yesterday that Scotiabank is thinking about closing down its operations in Belize. You know what I mean? How true it is, I have to figure out, I have to find out today. But if that is true, that's, that, that is coming as a result of that, those same problems with the with, 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 the, with the, the fact about compliance with the international financial rules, right? The U.S. has asked Belize to slow down with the drugs. And the planes are landing like almost every week or whatever, every month. You know what I mean? And everybody is hearing about these things and nobody gets arrested and nobody knows how much drugs was, was confiscated or if anything was done. Then they're asking us about these IBCs are that, that are allowing people to tax shelter or to run illegal businesses, prostitution and, and gambling and all kinds of stuff. And instead of us bringing these things to a, to a finish, more of it is happening. They're telling us, stop this ship registry with these, with, with these ships that are all over the world doing all kinds of illegal activities. And we, every week we're hearing about some ship getting caught in this country or the next country, some other part of the world with a Belize flag on it, right? So Belize, uh, and then the, the human trafficking one as well, right? We, uh, we have been on that human trafficking thing as well. And also the crime, right? The level of, of crime in Belize has just surged, mm -hmm. you know? So the U.S., I believe, is not very happy with Belize. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. In the beginning, we used to have an ambassador some people say, oh, no, 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 uh, yeah, yes. but I look at signs. I like to read signs. We used to have an ambassador of the United States to Belize. Now we have just a charge the affairs. That's a sign. You know, a charge the affairs is a lower than an ambassador appointment, right? In other words, uh, the U.S. has signaled to Belize that it has become of less importance to it. Okay. And the U.S. has to defend its own best interests, right? So I think that that is playing a role in the geopolitics of, of, of where this pressure is coming from on Belize. The UK, you know, they have their own financial problems, right? But also Belize, uh, has Belize been a very good ally to the, to the UK? Our politicians constantly slander them, oh, they're colonialists, oh, they, they, they stole the country blind and left us without nothing, and they are slave owners, and they are all kinds of criticisms of, of, of the British and the queen, and get rid of the queen, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, these things are not very good for the relations between the UK and Belize. Belize needs to actually become mature, grow up. You know, like a, like a teenager rebel. You know, like, like my kids right now are in that teenager level, and I have to struggle to have my patience, you know, um, because they are naturally rebellious, right? So in the early years, you could understand Belize was anti-colonial, Belize was, you know, you could understand that. But now we're 37, for Christ's sake. You know, we're 37. Grow up, Belize. You know what I mean? Let's have a mature relationship with our parent. Let's say the UK is our mother, right? Mother country. Then we must be mature and we must go back to our mother and we must repair relations, just like how a mature person, after you reach 22 and you pass 22 years old and you're not that little childish rebel anymore, and then you start to have a good relationship back again with your parents. It's normal, you see what I mean? So this needs to happen with the UK, right? We, we take from the UK, they gave us 
training for our for our forces. They gave us military equipment. They gave us the, the camps, the, the army camps that were here. They they even uh, defended us for so many years. Brought their military here. They are still here right now. Some of them, even though they say in training, but they are still here. You know what I mean? And also, uh, the head of state of Belize is still Queen Elizabeth. It didn't change. It's still in our constitution. And uh, so these things need to be clarified. You know, uh, did we inform the British government properly about Guatemala being in SARS tomb? Where is the proof? I want to see the proof. You know what I mean? I don't believe these guys anymore. These guys are running around the world saying, oh, we're, ha uh, we're fine and dandy with Guatemala. We are body buds, we are sweet, everything is cool. You know what I mean? They're not telling the world that how their forces are in our country. And I want to see where the British has been informed officially through some kind of official paper, black and white, that they have been informed and in, in, a ma in a manner that shows that we are complaining, that we are not happy with it. You see what I mean? And I don't have any proof of that. I have, I've searched, I've asked in the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, and nobody can give me a black and white where Belize has officially informed the, the, the government of the head of state. Right, that we have this situation going on in our country, and uh, that's another reason why I'm saying no. You know, because I, I don't feel proper confidence that how our head of state country, which has been defending us all these years and probably is willing still to defend us if we would ask for it, right? Uh, I don't feel confident that we have done enough to to number one repair the relations first of all because I don't think the relations is nice. Uh, you know, those people helped us, and then. When we want to buy things for the VDF and so on, uh, we, we buy through loan, like shady characters. You know, see how the BDF, like one day you'll see them in our kind of uniform, the next day you'll see them in our next kind of uniform, and all different colors, all shades, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? It's pura rata, you call that, you know what I mean? They, they're buying stuff on the, instead of we should stick to the British military industrial establishment, okay? We should be buying our military equipment and our uniforms and our training and all of our stuff. We should be allies. You know what allies means? To be an ally, right? right? If you're an ally, you behave like an ally. You don't, you don't uh, uh, behave like somebody who is a, you know, um, a, a scum, right? So uh, then in an extension to that, the Commonwealth. You know, the, the Commonwealth supported Belize fully in, 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 our, in our reach up to independence, right? Have we informed the common, Commonwealth properly? Have we asked them for assistance? I know that how the, I, I read the charter, you can read it too. You know the charter of the, of the Commonwealth, one of the, one of the conditions there is that how it, it, it guarantees the security of its members. What, to what extent? We need to know. Let's get into the bottom line of this thing and find out what kind of security arrangement does the head of state uh, have with Belize and the Commonwealth with Belize? So, so basically what, what you're saying is one alternative would be to ask these organizations for assistance, informing them about what has been, has been happening, and then in turn, what would take place? Exactly, because it, you see, the thing is how if you ask them for help because you have an invasion in there, mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're asking them for help to take you to the ICJ as what they call, um, they, they call it um, equally interested goodwill parties. That, that's how uh, we, we are called, along with Guatemala, in this thing going to the ICJ, and we're requesting all these countries to help us financially to get this job done. So we are going as equally interested goodwill parties. So if we are doing that and asking them for money to go and do this action as an equally interested goodwill party, then it, it would be like a, like a double message, asking them as well for military assistance to, to fix a problem of an invasion in our south. You know what I mean? So uh, we can't be running those two things at the same time, right? So Obviously, our government has chosen to stick with the ICJ thing, and so they, they are not doing the other side. That's my opinion. They have to prove to me otherwise. I'm a Belizean, and I'm asking my government to show me the black and white. You know I mean? Where you have requested help from the UK and from the Commonwealth, those people who guarantee our security in the past, and I think they still do.
Right. So, mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to, to the situation with litigation risks, I, I, I do know that many Belizeans have the same issue. Mm -hmm. uh, when you ask them why we should not go to the ICJ, the first thing that they would say is either, why go to the ICJ? We, we have won our independence. George Price got our independence. We are a sovereign country. Why do we need to go to an international court of justice to... to um, for them to tell us the same thing, which we already know. If we go there, it's like if we're saying, okay, we're not sure if we are independent or, or not. But when it comes to the litigation risk mm -hmm. part, people are saying the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. we, if we go there, what guarantees us a win? The mm -hmm. Barrow administration has lost so many cases. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, example with the Ashcroft mm -hmm. administration. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but can we balance the situation by saying, when it comes to that particular situation with mm -hmm. this particular government, at the end, probably they didn't study the case well. Mm -hmm. I mean, here you have the example of our prime minister going to sign an agreement with Mr. Ashcroft and not even reading out the draft of that agreement and coming back and saying, oops, we made a mistake. So can we say, you know, when it comes to that, this particular case with this particular government, they have lost these litigations because the proper investigation or, or the proper reading hasn't taken place or they mm -hmm. haven't studied the case well and it could be different mm -hmm. with this scenario of going to the ICJ because it's not only them involved there would be other parties involved also absolutely you know I want to make something very clear uh, our lack of trust uh, our concern is not with the integrity of the ICJ I want to make that very clear Okay. All right, we, are, we are not bringing into question anything about the ICJ being a corruptible court or anything like that. Right? Where litigation risk is of concern, mm -hmm. causes doubt and lack of trust for us, is the outcome of a court case depends on more than just the judges. Right. It depends on the lawyers. Mm -hmm. It depends on who employs the lawyers. Right? Because the lawyers only can do what the employers instruct them to do right who pays the piper calls the tune right so our lack of trust and concern and doubt doesn't originate with the judges and with the court we are we are not uh, bringing into question anything about the united nations they are our friends and they have protected us they they recognize our independence our lack of trust and concern and doubt comes with the lawyers for example we have been guaranteed financing of eight million dollars are here i don't know what the number is because nobody has showed me any kind of accounting, but that's what, it, what is knocked around, $8 million. And uh, uh, that money, first of all, is not coming from Belize. It's not Belizean money. And my personal principle, I don't go anywhere if I'm broke. I sit right at home. Somebody invite me to go out for a couple beers and whatever. Thank you, next time, because I'm broke. If I can't buy you back one when I'm sitting there with you, I'm not going. That's my principle. I, yeah, that's just the kind of person who I am. And, 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 and uh, I want Belize to be the same way. You know what I mean? So I don't think that we should go into these major decisions when we are not paying for it so that we can get the best lawyers. We need to, the, if we're going to go to a court, okay, and we don't even know what, who those lawyers will be, all right? And, and, and if the opponent side have double bank lawyers you know the guys that bat the ball way out of the ballpark and then we have the guys who just dribble the ball right in the midfield you know what I mean? uh, and then we will lose you know what I mean? because the kind of lawyers and the way how they work and the power of their arguments you know uh, uh, influence the outcome of the case right and also the the, uh, the people who are hiring these lawyers who are they they will be these guys in Bamapan who are telling us we're crazy who only know about yes and don't look at the pros and cons of a situation, you know, and, and, and behaving really, really, um, really weird, you know, the way how these guys are behaving. And then also we know how corrupt they are. The, the country of Belize is, 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 you know, is not new to this, right? The, it, it's not only in this issue of the ICJ. We have corruption across the government and the private sector. Geez, because you, the government cannot be corrupt if the private sector is not involved with it. So this country is riddled with corruption. And we have to fix this place. We, we, you know, this is the this is the job that we need to do. 
I think that is the wake up call that our allies are, are calling us to do because this country is sliding too fast downwards and our allies are concerned for us. We are running close towards bankruptcy. Our crime rate is way up high. Our, our, our um, uh, poverty is above 40%. You know what I mean? uh, our literacy rate is going down. Oh, too many things are happening in this little country and I think that our allies, and these are good people, okay? These people are on our side, you know, right? But they want us to show ourselves now. They are telling us, Belize, are you self-determined? Are you sure you, you have the right to be independent? Are you sure that you have the competency to be sovereign? Because you have to be competent. If you are not a person who can police their borders, for example, how can you be independent and sovereign? And our foreign minister has gone on live TV, I saw it on the news, where he said, oh, the Guatemalan army is helping us to patrol our borders. He said it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and what, that's one of the first things that, that the court will, will, will look at because, you know, these guys are saying, oh, they will only look at the treaty. Crap. The, you know, there are rules about how the, and I read all those rules, and, and the ICJ looks at all different things, yes, including the treaties, but they also look at other things, including economic issues. There have been some ICJ rulings that, that have been made based on uh, the economic uh, uh, equity, they call it, right? Uh, it's, uh, equity means, uh, you know, like some kind of right, okay, that, that there is a balance or even share of something, okay? So th this, is, this is the way how I see it, and I don't see no, no ironclad, watertight thing. Um, uh, I think that whole litigation risk is a serious thing. And I'm not willing, like, a, like a, a, a guy told me, a businessman that I met yesterday in Spanish Chicago told me, he said, uh, he said if, if they can tell me that how I'm going there with 0.1% risk, I might go. He said, but if it's telling me 2% risk, <laughs> he said, I'm staying right here. You know what I mean, right? So <laughs> this, this is the whole concept of the thing, you know, and, and, and you have the bottom line of this whole thing coming is that how you have to be confident you have to be sure of yourself that you are an integral thing that you are a sovereign thing if you are not confident about this and you don't show it and it doesn't come out of you then you're you're causing a big problem you're causing a big problem 16 yeah. minutes after eight o'clock mm -hmm. we're gonna take a sharp break and then uh, uh, of course, when we come back, we continue our discussion with Mr. Richard Harrison. We'll go into what he wants to uh, carry out on September 21st. Uh, as we mentioned, he wants to see if uh, we can actually take 15,000 Belizeans to Belmopan on September 21st. Uh, so uh, we'll hear about that when we, when we come back. More of Despierta Belize right after the break. <laughs> The following is the Leader of the Opposition, Honorable John Brisenio's Weekly Address. Hi everybody. While I'm aware that these are very busy times with the final arrangements for getting our students back to school, as well as the rollout of this year's September celebrations, I want to remind all of you, 18 years or older, who did not go out and register to try and do so before the end of the month. Re-registration will not end on the 31st of August, but for many of you, especially those in the rural communities, it will mean the added inconvenience of having to travel to the nearest elections and boundaries office in your area. For some, this may mean traveling many miles from your village into town, and this could be an additional cost in these already hard times. So if you have not yet registered and can do so this week, please go out and get registered because we need every Belizean 18 years or older who qualifies as a voter to go out and get registered. 
when you think about it the whole reason we are also festive in september is because of our democracy we celebrate our independence and in truth what we are celebrating is our freedom and a democratic culture that came only because of the determination of our past leaders as i have said before it was mr price madame liz lindy rogers david mccoy florencio marin and a whole lot of nationalists who not only fought for universal adult suffrage but also for the voting age to be lowered from 21 to 18 years their efforts paved the way for many qualified belizeans 18 years or older to cast their ballot for elections or for any referendum in belize we must never forget who we are a nation of belizeans who desire to live in a free society exercising our right to determine how we are governed and who should lead us if you believe this is worth protecting then the least you can do is take the time to go out and get registered remember now next year will not only be the very important icj referendum but also village council elections and who knows we may even have a general election so like the boy scouts motto says be prepared so yes we have to put things in place for the start of the new school year yes we have to remember that we are getting into the more active part of the hurricane season so we have to keep our hurricane preparedness plan in place and yes we need to enjoy the celebrations but we cannot forget that our democracy needs us if we are going to build a belize that works for everyone so register thanks god bless and have a great week CDBA Consolidated Line of Credit was approved to the DFC in late 2016. It comprises of $40 million, the single largest loan approved to the DFC in its 55-year history. So this is a big achievement for the organization, the new restructured DFC. Under the line of credit, we'll be able to provide on lending to productive and business sector, monies for mortgage financing, education, and there's the renewable line whereby we are mainstreaming renewable energy and energy efficiency in Belize. DFC provides development financing. Being the only development bank in Belize, DFC works with its clients. It doesn't only provide loans, but it provides technical assistance along with loans. And the area of technical assistance, that hand-holding, that uh, startup business, that the farmer, that the manufacturing organization needs, is where DSC comes in. Our loans are more of a long-term, medium to long-term, but what it affords you is support. We provide forbearance in difficult times. Um, like, for example, industries that are having problems, for example, with droughts and floods and things like that. We restructure their payments. We extend the life of the loan. We continue to work with the farmer or the shrimp producer, whatever industry they're in. That's what development financing is about. Service is fast and reliable.
for home or business use. Enjoy 4 megabytes for only $55. Smart, bringing people together. And we are back with more of Despierta Belice, La Cultura Norteña. It's 25 minutes after 8 o'clock. Joining us on set this morning, we have uh, Mr. Richard Harrison. And also joining Mr. Harrison is uh, well-known Mr. Alfredo Ortega, mm -hmm. of course. And uh, he is one of the Belizeans who says he is going to be going to Belmopan on September 21st. So we're going to be speaking to both of them at this, at this point. Uh, in time and we are discussing of course the the belize guatemala territorial dispute mr harrison is of the opinion that we should not go to the icj for final resolution he's given some of his uh, points as to why we should not uh, do so number one lack of confidence under this this government uh, basically and uh, of course uh, let's get into the issue of Independence Day, the 21st of September. We know that uh, a group that you have, have formed uh, wants to see if they can take or pull out 15,000 patriots, 15,000 Belizeans mm -hmm. to go to, to Belmopan. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, Mr. Ortega is one of them who has said that he will stand strong and he will stand firm and he will go to Belmopan on that, on that day. Right. Now let's get a bit uh, deeper into that particular activity that you want to carry that you want to carry out all right but allow me right. before I go there to clarify a couple of things uh, there is a serious constitutional question with regards to this whole referendum process right the Constitution of Belize is something that is there to protect the country not only to protect the country from outside but to protect the country from inside okay one of the basic principles that are anchored in our constitution is that how we need 75 percent vote to be able to change take out a period put in a comma put in an exclamation mark whatever you're going to do to amend the constitution of belize it requires a 75% tier, okay? That's very important because that protects the country. Let's say you reach to a stage in your history where you have leaders that are weak, leaders that are tired, leaders that are frustrated, all right? And then they're ready to give up something or sell it or negotiate it or litigate it. They are weak leaders, okay? Our constitution protects us from these kinds of leaders by this by setting this threshold of 75 percent okay that is a basic requirement of our constitution now this referendum in the beginning when the special agreement was signed in 2008 it required a 60 percent tier which is a little bit lower than ours but they said oh Guatemala has some lesser threshold that's their problem. That's Guatemala's problem. We have to stick with our law. We have to stick with our constitution. Because our constitution is what defines us as a people, as a country. It defines our borders. Article 1 defines our borders. Yes, and So this, this aspect of that this referendum was then changed from 60% threshold down to zero. Right now, do you know what happens? If three people go to vote in this referendum... Okay. If three go to vote and two vote yes, the whole 400,000 of us have to go to ICJ. And that is not something that agrees with the spirit of our constitution. It is not correct. Okay, so that's another reason why I'm saying, I'm saying no. Because I believe honestly within myself that how this 
referendum and that requirement of the, of the threshold is something that we must respect. We must respect our own law. If we are going to go to the uh, United Nations uh, and that's a court of law and we are not even respecting our supreme law, I think that is not correct, right? So I, I just wanted to clarify that, that piece before we continue. There are other reasons why I say no. I'm going to publish them. They're going to be published. So uh, the time is, doesn't allow us. But I want to get into, into the, uh, the September 21st project, right? So I'm saying we need to get 15,000 patriots into Belmopan on the 21st, Independence Day. Okay? Why do we need to do this? Okay? Both our governments, PUP and UDP, have been asking our international allies for help all these years okay help us we want to go to the ICJ help us we want and these people have been helping us forking out their hard-earned money their taxpayers money and uh, our people just came aware of this thing like I said no to uh, maybe around the time of the of the Guatemalan referendum was when the thing got a little bit noisy and then we, we became aware and people start to pay attention and to read what's going on about this issue, right? So uh, we cannot just go to the referendum quietly and boom, when you see 70% of the vote comes out as no. If I put myself in the shoes of our allies, that's how I, I analyze how I think somebody else will will we'll look at what I'm doing, right? I put myself in their shoes. You have to have empathy, Belize. You have to be reasonable people, right? So, if we just go there and we 70% of us say no, in my opinion, if I was in the Allied shoes, I think I would look at the Belizean people and say, OMG, they stick the finger to me. Yes, huh? They stick the middle finger to the Allies. And I don't believe that that is the right way to say no. So I, I, I'm arguing that how Belize, what you say is as important as how you say it. So we can't just go to April 10th and 70% say no and stick the finger up to the allies. We have to do it some other way. We have to take this thing because these politicians didn't ask us no permission. I don't know if anybody asked you to sign any special agreement. Did anybody ask you? Nobody asked me, right, to, to sign no special agreement that we were going to go to some referendum with a zero threshold. Nobody asked me none of these things, right? Neither PUP nor UDP. So in my opinion, I think that how our government does not have the authority to do those things, right? They should have a referendum, first of all, to allow them to go and sign a special agreement that has to do with borders, because borders is constitution, right? And the constitution requires 75%. So they needed to do a vote in the House, and 75% of our House members had to vote yes to go and do that special agreement. There is no such House ruling. You understand what I'm saying? That was completely an executive decision by both the PUP and the UDP. So we have to think good about how are we going to say no to the ICJ. And I'm thinking that the only way peaceful change nowhere in the world does peaceful change take place without numbers of people? The Gandhi, the Martin Luther King, you know, um, uh, uh, all of the, of the famous leaders who made big changes in the world, they didn't do it with military force. They did it with mass amount of people peacefully, peacefully demonstrating and showing their will, their self-determination, right? So that is the basis upon which I'm arguing that we should put this 15,000. And why the number 15,000? Well, this thing has to be above politics. That's why we have declared ourselves as a non-political citizens committee. So that everybody can join us. PUPs and UDPs, nobody, nobody should be able to threaten a Belizean for going to raise a Belize flag. No UDP, nor PUP, nor BPP, or any other kind of P, nobody who is Belizean should be afraid or be intimidated from raising their Belize flag, especially on Independence Day and especially in our place of business, which is Belmopan. Right? So this is what I'm asking. I'm saying, Belizeans, please come. We need the numbers. 
the two political parties have in the past claimed 10,000, the two of them. I think in 1998 the PUP claimed 10,000 and in 2008 the UDP claimed 10,000. Some people said it was only 7,000, 8,000, but they claimed 10,000, fine, no problem. But this issue of ICJ is bigger than both the PUP and the UDP and any other P. Therefore, it cannot be 10,000. It has to be more than 10,000. But knowing our people, you were talking before about, right, uh, this is Independence Day, or people like to bash, or people like to, you know, Sammy? I'm just being, I'm just being realistic. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it is true. It, it's, been, it's been proven in, in, the, in the past, and that's why I asked how realistic yeah. it is for yeah. you to say you want to actually take out 15,000 Belizeans to Belmopan on the 21st of September when evidence has shown we we prefer to be at the do at the juve or we prefer to be at the parade or take part in the parade and actually be in Belmopan on, on that day. So based on evidence, I was just asking how realistic it is to actually take out fifteen thousand Belizeans on well, that particular day. Well, this is the key part right here: is that how this will be the biggest party that Belize has ever seen? Okay. Right? There's a lot of there's going to be a lot of bands, a lot of DJs, models. Floats, you know, <laughs> a lot of beautiful people. All right, this will be the biggest party that Belize has ever seen. So, if you're worried about party, this is the place to be, right? Uh, but more than that, right? This thing is going to uh, is going to happen between 9 a.m. So we're asking everybody to arrive there by 9 a.m., mm -hmm. right? And we're going to be done by 1 o'clock because we are aware that all the other communities have their own celebrations. What we're saying is that how. This is a special year. That's why we're calling for this thing now. You see I me? Mean? Uh, this is not something about every year. Okay? This is something about now and the preciseness of the ICJ coming in April. Okay? And we want all of our people to get out to vote. You know what will happen when you see 15,000 Belizeans waving their Belize flags? My honest opinion, I think that that will change Belize. I think it is going to be a time when the Belizean people realize and say in unity there is strength right this icj thing has been dividing us you know some are, some people are saying yes some people are saying no right uh, udp is saying one thing pup is saying the other thing but things are changing right things are changing every day and and and, and hopefully we will move closer towards unity as we move towards the 21st of september right what is the message uh -huh. that you all want to send out on on that day well, basically we are saying, number one, how you say no is important. We have to go out there and we have to be unified instead of divide. In unity, there is strength. When we stand together, we can face any challenge. If we divide ourselves, we become weaker and it's easier for anybody to take advantage of you. So this thing about self-determination is not something that can be expressed at the beach side this thing about self-determination cannot be at the riverside or at the little bar or under the mango tree self-determination about a country about nationhood have to be massive numbers where where do the americans go <laughs> washington dc to do their business you know I mean? where do the british go to london to their capital where the place of business is and that's what we are saying is how Come out and stand up for Belize. 8867. We're giving a specific instruction to our government of Belize. Whichever party is in there, we don't care. Specific instruction, and you're getting it from 15,000. You're not getting it from little small groups. You're getting it from 15,000. If you cannot bring us to an understanding and explain to us that we have zero risk, that we're not going to lose a blade of grass or a grain of sand or a drop of water in this ICJ thing, then you know something, you need to press pause and go back to the drawing board. Yes, you need to go back to the drawing board. And we're going to be giving all the reasons why. I've gone through some this morning. And we're also going to be having speakers who will be telling the country what are the things that we need to do after we say no. Because it's not just about saying no, 
It's about knowing what are you going to do after and you hence finish. Hence, I asked, what are the other alternatives that we would, would, would have? Well, we have a lot of a lot of different alternatives. You know, I mean, I don't know. Do we have the time? <laughs> 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 if, if we, but I want to talk a little bit more about this Independence right. Day. Right. Right. So, what do I see? What vision do I see happening there? Well, Belmopan City always has the official ceremonies of the country. And that takes place in front of the assembly building. The prime minister, the leader of the opposition, and all the dignitaries and diplomats and their invited guests are going to be in that little corridor. Okay? Now, we are not going there to disrupt, to heckle, or to cause any kind of problems. What we are going to Belmopan to do is to enhance, to make big, to make more beautiful, uh, uh, to make more energetic our celebration of our independence and sovereignty. That's what we're going there to do, okay? But I'm sure that how we will have areas cordoned off and 15,000 is a lot of people. So we will have to be doing stages with different, with different artists entertaining and uh, different speakers speaking in different parts of the, of the, of the, of the city. Uh, so like we will have people, uh, a presentation at the uh, uh, Governor General Field at the Gordon Mayfield, at the entrance of Belmopan by Quality Poultry, by, uh, by La Cabana, by the entrance to the Constitution Drive. You know what I mean? So 15,000 will fill up that place, okay? Our floats will start from Pine Lumber out on the Western Highway and come in around the new roundabout entrance there where the, where the Western Highway runs into Hummingbird Highway. And it comes down there, it enters into Constitution Drive, and then it, 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 it joins up with the, with the regular Bemopan celebration. They usually have a celebration too, as well every year, right? So we're not going there to disrupt or to cause problems. We're going there to enhance and to make more beautiful, right? So I, I expect that we will be having scout groups uh, marching out there with their Belize flags, girl guides, uh, uniform school parade, uh, a lot of floats. You know, we need to have... The, the, the national volleyball team in a float. We need to have the national football team in a float, right? We need to have um, our, our cane farmers, if, if we can have a, a nice cane truck giving out some cane, or I don't, I don't know what we're going to do, hermano, but you need to help me. The ideas right? are, coming, <laughs> are coming along, right? <laughs> you know, we need marching bands, right? We, we already have a few um, uh, of the, of the uh, entertaining bands uh, who are, who are uh, already getting sponsors and getting ready to, to, to do show, right? Uh, what, that's what they do. Right. Uh -huh. And um, so uh, uh, this is what I see happening. And then we are going to invite international media, okay? So we're going to have international uh, stations sending their correspondence here, uh, for them to video and take live our activity and sh telling the whole world all right, that Belize is celebrating its independence and sovereignty and it's claiming 8867. That means not a drop of water, not a blade of grass, not a grain of sand. Mm -hmm. and, and this message has to go to the whole world and we have to do it in a nice way. This thing has to be orderly. It has to be clean. You can't be littering the place and have the whole place full of garbage. You can't do that. You know what I mean? This has to be the best face that Belize can show the world. That's, that's the way how I see this Belmopan thing uh, evolving. So, and I want machinery, I want all of those combines, those big harvesters, right? Um, the loaders, uh, we need some cane trucks out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? The old Bedfords, because this is an old industry, hermano, right? This, this industry has been in Belize for, for so many years. It has sustained this country. Right? It has contributed so much every year, it's a hundred million and change to this economy. Right? And, and so uh, uh, sugar is, 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 is sugar city. This is the sugar city. Right. Right? And uh, so we need to have the, our canyeros there. We need our teachers. The BNTU stood up for Belize and they stood up by themselves and at their own expense. Do you remember that? And uh, many people were saying all oh, the Belizean people didn't stand up with them. We did stand up with them. All the parents and all the students who were not going to school in those days were standing with the teachers, okay? Let's make that very clear. So uh, uh, don't tell the teachers that they should stay stuck in the classroom and that they should not talk about what's happening in their country. I don't believe that, right? I believe that how the teachers are a strength for this country. 
There is all 6,000 of them, right? It's a big number. And we need 15,000 people. Where are we going to get it? We can't go to the people who can't afford to go because we're not providing no free buses. We're not providing no free food. We're not giving nobody $10 to go. We're not giving any money. You understand? We're asking the people of Belize, and it's only 4%. 15,000 is 4% of the population. All right? So we're asking all the people who can afford to put their lead gas in their tank, to fold their lead ice box with their water and their some lead snacks, right? And to make your way. Nobody is going to come to your house to pick you up. This is about self-determination. You understand what I'm saying, Kami? Right. This is about self-determination, and self-determination does not happen by you sitting at home waiting around for somebody to come. Why I got only thirty dollars to get by this boss? You understand? Know I mean? It never happened like that. This have to be the working people who will take on the responsibility of making up this fifteen thousand because we're not paying anybody. See, I'm not asking anybody for money. We're going around to business people asking them for floats. We're not asking anybody for money. We don't want money. We don't want our, our citizens' committee's hands has to remain clean the way how we want Belize to be. So we have to run this event the way how we want Belize to be run. Right. You see what I mean? So we're, we're not asking anybody for money, right? We want you to bring your people. We want you to bring your business, show your sign of your business, put your Belize flags, be proud of Belize. You see what I mean? Okay. So that's what... Uh -huh. Now we know that, that uh, Mr. Ortega is one of the, the individuals who has signed on to, to this uh, occasion and he mm -hmm. will be going to Bamapan. Just let me get a few words um, with him before mm -hmm. we close off this morning's show, of course, uh, on uh, why is it that, that he wants to take part in this, in this activity and head out to Bamapan on the 21st of September as an individual, of course, and as a cane farmer at the end. Come lo voy a decir en español. Uh -huh. <coughs> en, realmente por qué en, estoy motivado para este movimiento en el 2015 fui parte del Volunteers, Northern Volunteers que fuimos a poner la placa en gracias a Dios y nos atraparon por los guatemaltecos y terminamos hasta en, en Livingston uh -huh. y de ese tiempo para aquí realmente el ministro encargado o el ministro que está, cada vez en vez de que nos motive, nos regaña a nosotros que por qué estamos haciendo el tipo de movimientos que nosotros estamos provocando. creando problemas y estamos provocando a los guatemaltecos. ¿Cómo vamos a provocar nosotros a ellos si estamos dentro de nuestro propio territorio? ¿Cómo les estamos insultando a ellos si estamos dentro de nuestras propias aguas? ¿Qué conocemos? Estaba yo leyendo un, um, un post que alguien puso de, de Mr. Price que hace en CUT, cuando él dijo de que Belice no está para litigación, no está para negociación, para negocia para negociación. Belice no está para vender, para, ni para vender ni regalar. Y en ese tiempo cuando él lo dijo, éramos colonia, no estábamos independientes. Ahora que estamos independientes y tenemos personas más estudiadas, tenemos abogados, que están en, representándonos como nuestros ministros, ellos nos están llevando más al barranco, nos están hundiendo más en vez de sacarnos a la luz. Uh -huh. Y por esa razón yo no estoy de acuerdo uh -huh. en lo que nos están poniendo de que es un sí al ICG, porque no nos están dando otra opción, solo nos están diciendo es sí, es sí y vámonos para allá. Uh -huh. Y realmente no estoy de acuerdo. Las actitudes que están haciendo en Guatemala, el gobierno, porque la gente de Guatemala no podemos decir que la gente de Guatemala es el que está causando, es el gobierno para mantener poder porque cuando hablas con las personas en Guatemala no se oye nada de, este, de esta situación es uh -huh. más, ellos dicen que ellos quieren convivir con nosotros en trabajar, uh -huh. tenemos muchos guatemaltecos aquí con nosotros en Belice y los respetamos, ya los líderes políticos hicieron muchas cosas que indebidas que no debían de hacer, lo hicieron en contra de la constitución y ya está hecho ¿Cómo lo quitamos? Estamos yendo en un re-registration ahorita. Muchas cosas salieron. ¿Qué dijeron? ¿Qué van a hacer? ¿Van a poner a estas personas otra vez? Mismo el ministro salió y dijo, ya tienen nacionalidad, tienen derecho a, a registrarse. Así es de que continúan y ya son parte de nosotros. Pero esto es uno y el, el otro punto es esto de que realmente como beliceños vivimos aquí desde 1981 que nos independizamos y desde antes de eso se ha estado hablando de que Belice tiene un territorio de 8.867 millas cuadradas. Y desde en ese tiempo, cuando oyes 
¿O es las canciones de Lord Laro? ¿O es las canciones que algunos beliceños han hecho? Como que ellos aman más a Belice que nuestros propios ministros. Porque escuchando la canción que, que sacó Lord Laro de We know, eh, que Live with Belize Alone, uh -huh. esa es una canción bien fuerte. Cuando escucha uh -huh. esa canción en su, en su lentitud completa, te está dando un mensaje fuerte. Y esa canción lo sacó él en 1981 cuando estábamos eh, llegando a la independencia. Uh -huh. Así es de que esas cosas, Cami, yo estoy aquí como, como un individual, como Fred, como un beliceño, okay. uh -huh. diciendo que yo no apoyo un sí al ICJ. Yo uh -huh. estoy aquí, yo conozco lo que es nuestro país Belice, nos enseñaron en la escuela poniéndonos el mapa de lo que cubre Belice, por eso me lastima y me duele mucho cuando sale Mr. Errington y dice de que nosotros no tenemos frontera. Cuando tú ves, cuando tú ves el mapa mundial, cuando tú ves el mapa de Belice a donde sale México, Belice y Guatemala, ves la línea que define entre Belice y Guatemala y ves arriba donde se divide el agua que es el río Hondo con, con México y ves abajo a donde el río Sarsún nos divide. Así es que claramente tenemos algo marcado, tenemos algo que nos demuestra de que esto es tuyo, uh -huh. de que este es nuestro. Nuestra, nuestro pasaporte tiene nuestro mapa adentro. Así uh -huh. es que ¿cómo van a, va a venir una persona ahora a decir uh -huh. de que no tenemos línea, que tenemos una línea imaginaria? Uh -huh. Puedes imaginar muchas cosas que no conoces. Uh -huh. ¿Por qué los británicos cuando estaban aquí mantenían esa línea limpio? ¿Por qué lo mantenían limpio? Porque es una línea definida. Tú tienes tu, tu terreno, Cami. Cuando tú vas en tu terreno y ves las marcas que tienen puesto por los subeleros, ¿qué te indica eso? De que ese es la, el terreno que te pertenece y ese es el que tú mantienes limpio. No te metes a limpiar el del vecino. A menos de que el vecino no viva allá, lo haces para que no hagan culebras y cosas que entren en tu... Pero ¿sabes a dónde está tu definición? Lo mismo está entre nosotros, como entre Belice, México y Guatemala. Y por esa razón yo digo, no al ICJ, no con este ministro que tenemos, no con el primer ministro, porque ellos no están haciendo nada para realmente demostrarnos de que ellos están empujando, como hizo Mr. Price en su tiempo, de que el movimiento y las palabras que decía animaban a la gente, este es el camino que vamos a tomar, esto es lo que vamos a hacer. Ellos no están con eso, ellos nos están más eh, realmente dando la espalda que ya ni sabemos qué realmente va a suceder. Okay. Bueno, muy bien. Uh, yeah, and let's, uh, let's uh, wrap up. Yo, I'm, I'm getting to yo closing quería, time, so let's, uh, permítame, let's get your final favor. words this, yeah. this morning. Yo quería dar muchas gracias a Alfredo uh, por sus palabras hoy en la mañana, acompañarme en este trabajo. Uh, y lo que estamos haciendo es organizando comités en todos los municipios. Ok. okay? En, en Colosal, en Orange Jack, en Benque, en, en Cayo, en todos los municipios estamos organizando los que van a, a estar imitando y organizando y motivando los pueblos. Entonces, queremos más gente aquí en Orange Jack, right? Y espero que uh, Alfredo va a poder ayudar en, en, en llamar la atención de, de, de más personas, trabajadores, right? gente luchadores que pueden llamar gente. Right? Entonces, eh, por favor, Alfredo, dale una invitación a todos los cañeros. Queremos que todos los cañeros salen ahí, porque este trabajo es para Belice. Right? Y, y, y este trabajo es para unir Belice. Y este trabajo de unir Belice nos va a traer fuerzas a Belice. Y para hacer los cambios necesarios para componer este país, se necesita mucha fuerza. ¿eh? Entonces, estas cosas solo se van a realizar si tenemos la unidad y la contribución de todas las personas, porque no podemos esconder abajo de una piedra y decir que somos autodeterminados. No, la autodeterminación requiere demostrar su cara. Uno tiene que ir a mostrar su cara y levantar su bandera para ser autodeterminado y expresarlo en una forma pacífica. La otra forma de, de, de mostrarlo es de ir como los países que tienen grandes armadas. Se van a guerra y lo hacen, ¿me entiende? Nosotros, Belice, no tenemos ese tipo de, eh, ni de emoción ni de, ni de pasión para guerra. Nosotros somos una gente muy pacífica, pero ¿cómo...? 
lograr cosas siendo pacífico, tiene que tener números, números de personas que muestran su cara y decir claramente, este soy yo y este es lo que yo quiero para mi país. ¿Vale? Entonces, para hacer la autodeterminación, Belice, tenemos que unir, por favor, Alfredo, Dios que da, te da muchas fuerzas, amigo. ¿Vale? Y todos, todos mis amigos de aquí de Sugar City, please help us, okay? including you, Kami. And by the way, tomorrow, I, when I wake up, I will take you to court for your house, okay? okay? Uh, and you have to come with me, okay? All right. Well, I want to thank you guys very much for being here with us um, uh, this morning, Mr. Harrison, for making that trip uh, from Belmopan to, to Orange Walk, of course, and, and uh, to express your sentiments on this issue of going to the, I want to to the ICJ. I to explain what are we going to do. Right. So before the 21st, if you can invite me back, I will want to explain to the people of Belize what can we do after we say no. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Ortega, Señor Ortega, gracias también por estar aquí con nosotros eh, esta, esta mañana. Y la invitación, por supuesto, porque hay cosas de la industria azucarera que hay que, que platicar también eh, durante el programa. Llegamos al final del programa de esta manera y si el divino creador lo permite, estaremos nuevamente con ustedes mañana ya jueves para otro segmento de Despierta Belice, la cultura norteña. Ha sido un gusto y un placer, como siempre. Muy buenos días. Y que Dios nos bendiga. Hasta mañana, si Él lo permite.